You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? It's your girl, Sade, checking in for another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. Super excited to be here as always. I want to shout out the sponsor of this episode, BetterHelp. Y'all, it's affordable, it's convenient, and don't forget, crew, you have access to get 10% off your first month of professional therapy because of our partnership with BetterHelp. Just click the link in the show notes or remember typing in betterhelp.com slash crew love. You cannot go wrong with investing in yourself and getting therapy. That's your, that's your self-care too. Because if you can check your mindset and, and get therapy, that's going to help you elevate and put all the pieces together. I'm trying to tell you, okay? All right. Now, uh, in addition to therapy, <laughs> I'm a strong believer of putting God first above all things, and he will align everything else. And I strongly believe God bless therapists. That's a gift to be a therapist, to help your crazy behind. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but seriously, it's definitely a gift. And God has blessed the therapist just as he blessed the um, the dentist to fix your teeth. He has blessed a the therapist to help you with your mind. All right. Okay, so we're going to get into this. Who going to check me, boo? God is. He is always checking us, and we deserve a good check to keep us in check. You hear me? Okay, so this particular check this week comes from the message, Know Your Worth by Pastor Tim Timberlake, my pastor at Celebration Church Arena in Jacksonville, and the link where you can watch the full, uh, the full sermon. It's in the show notes as well. Now, he preached from a few scriptures. This particular scripture stood out to me. It was the quote-unquote Valentine's Day message about love from the perspective of of being single, of being married. And I am married. I've married 13 years this year. So yeah, July. And Ephesians 1, 11, 12 read, In him talk about God, we were all so chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, God, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory, God's glory. Okay. And one of the two points one of the points he made that really struck me and checked me just being a spouse he said remember your spouse is a child of God first how you speak and handle them should be pleasing to God (laughs) and I remember I told y'all in the beginning of the episode I even think it's in my introduction uh uh, introduction introduction trailer episode where I talked about I used to be a shooter with the mouth I we would call it taking shots and my husband would have to check me in my mouth and <laughs> the thing is when he said how I talk to him has to be pleasing unto God I've oh now I've gotten a lot better like we don't curse we don't fight like kids. <laughs> I feel like when we first got married, we were so young. We used to fight like children, go below the belt, you know, very petty, fighting, arguing, ridiculous. But when we were in church Sunday and he, this past, not th- not yesterday Sunday, but the Sunday before, and he preached that thing, I was just like, oh, snap, you're right. But even y'all, the ones who are not married, You can apply this to anyone. People are a child of God first, regardless of how you like them, what they've done to you, what they doing, whatever. They are a child of God first. And we have to make sure we're speaking and handling people as such. Okay, it's not our job to judge. It's not our job to even correct. 
You know what I'm saying? We have to let God do his thing. Okay, it just hits different in the context of how I deal with my spouse. Um, but I but I definitely want to take that and apply it to anyone that I encounter when I yeah, somebody might flick you off or curse you out or do something that really hurts you. Trust me, we've all been hurt. It's just what can I do to react and how I handle them? And I like I said last episode, like we need to get back to thinking what would Jesus do and handle people with a lot more care and then let God be the one with vengeance because he will take care of his children. All right. So, yeah, Ephesians 1, 11 through 12 really was a, a check knowing that not just when you're reading the Bible, it's just not about me being chosen. The people you interact with are chosen too. And God died for them as well, whether they believe in him or not. So it's our duty as Christians and followers of Christ to treat people as such. Okay. All right. <laughs> so let's get into our book yes the one thing this one thing has got me tripping all right i love that album y'all ever listen to that album it's really good all right chapter 13 live with purpose yes we're gonna get into that in chapter 14 live by priority so let's get into it chapter 13 opening quote is life isn't about finding yourself life is about creating yourself Ooh, i love that All right, on page 139, he gets into this point, happiness on purpose. But before I read the segment about happiness on purpose, I want you to think about the movie Scrooge, um, uh, the Christmas Carol with Scrooge. And it says the the writer of the of the film Dickinson reveals purpose as a combination of where we're going and what's important to us he implies that our priority is what we place the greatest importance on and our productivity comes from the actions we take he lays out life as a series of connected choices where our purpose sets our priority and our priority determines the productivity our actions produce scrooge purpose is clearly about money and the beginning of the show He cares for money more than for people and believes that money is the end in which may means are justified based on his purpose and his priority is straightforward, making as much money for himself as he can. Now, as a narrative ends, Scrooge's purpose is no longer money, but people. He values helping people more than hoarding money and believes money is good for the good it can do. Put it into action. How are you using your money? Okay. Where he once saved money and used people, he now uses money to save people. So this just goes, money isn't evil. It's how we use it and how we worship it and how we praise it. You get what I'm saying? It's about how we use it. Okay. And it says here also on page 139, who we are and where we want to go determine what we do and what we want to accomplish. A life lived on purpose is the most powerful of all in the happiest. And that's where we get into the happiness on purpose. And it starts off, ask enough people what they want in life and you'll hear happiness as an overwhelming response, which is true. People just want to be happy. I just want to be happy, but if I keep on doing the things, oh, oh, that song too, hit. But like it says in the song, you have to change. If you're not happy, you have to change how you're becoming happy, okay? All right, and it says on page 141, over the ages, our greatest minds have pondered happiness and their conclusions are much the same. Having money and things won't automatically lead to lasting happiness. People think, oh, when I get money, I'm gonna be the happiest of all. Yes, it makes life easier and things, but are you gonna be a Scrooge? Are you gonna be stingy? Are you gonna be selfish and you're only using it to benefit you? Well, what good is that? And even if you get money, there's rich people who still aren't happy and commit suicide. So let's get our minds right to be able to use money in a fundamental way to help move and transform our society, even within our own worlds and our own family and friends, okay? Okay, 
All right. So why once we get what we want, our happiness sooner or later wanes because we quickly become custom to what we acquire. This happens to everyone and eventually leaves us bored, seeking something new to get or do. Worse, we may not even stop or slow down to enjoy what we've got because we automatically get up and go for something else. There's two strong statements in here. We get there, we become comfortable and accustomed to what you've inquired. And then you don't appreciate the same. And it made me think of a sermon. I think it was Pastor uh, Michael Todd preach. You're in, you're cursing what you prayed for. It was something of that context. But like, I'll take it back to home ownership because one, I'm in real estate. <laughs> and I feel like everyone can honestly understand that. You pray, oh, I want this big house. I want all this land. Or even if you don't want a bunch of land, typically most people want a big home. They want to, I want the mansion. I want the the cars, da, 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 da. But they don't think, well, what is it going to take to take care of these things, right? So then you get into those things. Then you get comfortable with those things. If you acquire them and it's just like, oh, I thought when I got this, you ever... Go out, well, as a woman, we be like, oh, I'm feeling horrible. I want to go out and buy something or I want to go out and eat something or have a drink. But then after that weighs off, after you've accumulated the stuff, you're like, you're still in the same position. Yeah, temporary relief, that don't work, honey. <laughs> you got to do the real work and find, um, find, that, find out what happiness is beyond just buying and acquiring things. And then you always getting to next. When are you going to appreciate where you're at and value that? Okay. So then it says on page 142, happiness happens on the way to fulfillment. <laughs> there is always going to be the process. And as long as you're living you're going to constantly be fulfilling something. And that's where the happiness lies. The happiness lies in fulfillment. And I'm not saying that you got to run yourself crazy daily to feel fulfillment. I'm just saying it's all part of the process. It says here, I believe that financially wealthy people are those who have enough money coming in without having to work to finance their purpose in life. To be financially wealthy, you must have a purpose for your life. In other words, without purpose, you'll never know when you have enough money and you can never be financially wealthy. Ooh. Dr. Martin Lingaman believes there are five factors that contribute to our happiness. Positive emotion. Pleasure, achievement, relationships, engagement, and meaning. Of these, he believes engagement and meaning are the most important. When our daily actions fulfill a bigger purpose, the most powerful and enduring happiness can happen. Wow. So he thinks engagement and meaning are the most important. And I can agree. Because you can have all the things in the world, but you still need people to engage with. Because we're put on this earth to love others and to be in relationship. That's why God made us, to be in relationship, okay? And to have meaning, it has to be bigger than just, I want to make money. Because if that's the goal and you get the money, Trust me, you're not just going to be satisfied just because you've made money. You're going to get to a point where you're going to feel like it has to be something bigger than just making money. Okay, it has to be connected with meaningful things. Okay, and that measure of meaning could be different for everybody. But I remember reading about one of the things that some of the wealthiest people regret on their deathbed is spending time with their family. And that is the biggest thing you don't want to regret. And I'm not saying that you're not putting yourself in position where your family be, can be taken care of after you pass. But at the end of the day, you need to be setting time to have a meaningful life with your family. So that way you can enjoy the real meaning of life. Okay. All right. 
So let's get into the section on page 143, still in chapter 13, Life, Live with Purpose. There's a section called The Power of Purpose, okay? It says, purpose is the straightest path to power and the ultimate source of personal strength, strength of conviction and strength to preserve. When you have a definite purpose for your life, Clarity comes faster, which means to more conviction in your direction, which usually leads to the faster decisions. This is how knowing where you're going helps lead you to the best possible outcomes and experience life has to offer. This makes me think of the question we had last week about, um, darn it, I think the listener wanted to quit. I still have the thing right here. What was it? What did she say? Oh, the New Year's resolutions and trying to figure out how to stick to them and wanting to give up and how do you stay pushing through? Because you have to make sure that it's a defined purpose. Because if it's not a defined purpose, it's going to be easy to lose clarity. It's going to be easy not to be motivated and not have a direction. because And your decisions are going to be delayed because it, it there's no divine purpose. Okay? It says here, purpose also helps you when things don't go your way. Knowing why you're doing something provides the inspiration and the motivation to give the extra perspiration needed to preserve when things get go south. Because things will go south. <laughs> get used to it. You will fail at one point. But that doesn't mean that you stop. And that doesn't mean that you stop. You just keep going. Okay? So that's the thing. I want you to focus on keep going and finding your purpose. And making sure you're understanding the defining moment. So that way you can go back to that why to continue to push forward when things do go south. Okay. And because when it's not defined, you're going to be emailing me asking me, well, how do I keep going? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. So let's get into chapter 14. Live by priority. Oh, it doesn't say priorities. <laughs> it says priority. I love this. Um, goal setting to the now. Purpose without pro um, priority is powerless. To be precise, listen y'all closely. The word priority, not priorities, okay? It says here, if something mattered the most, it was a priority, okay? Everything cannot be a priority, then it's not a priority. <laughs> now, there are sections to categorizing in the moment. Okay, I'm working on work, but what's the priority for work? What's the one thing? We talked about this in chapter, on page 114 in chapter 11, the success habit. And it's like, what's the one thing I can do as such by doing it? Everything else will be easier and unnecessary. And then we categorize them for spiritual, physical, personal, key relationships, uh, job, um, physical health, and um, your business and finances. Yes, there's priority in each of those things that you can focus on, okay? So we have to establish that. Everything is not a priority because if everything was a priority, it wouldn't be a priority because a priority means something that mattered the most. And if you got 20 things and you're talking about all of them a priority, okay, we need to decipher what matters the most and what is the easiest thing that we can do now that's going to help set up everything else, okay? The domino effect of it all, all right? On page 148, it reads, what you do in any given moment determines what your experience in the next. Your present now and all future nows are undeniable determined by the priority you live in the moment okay so today i don't it's monday you might have a ton of things to do let's evaluate what is the priority today for me i always pick out one thing maybe two 
that needs to be done, but there's always one that trumps the other, okay? It's like, okay, it's Monday on this particular day. This has to be done to make everything else easier to set up for the next thing that needs to be the priority, okay? You, you catch my drift? On page 149, it talks about this thing called hyperbolic discontinuing. The further away a reward is in the future, the smaller the immediate motivation to achieve it. Maybe it's because objects that are further away appear smaller, so people mistakenly assume they are they really are and discontinue, discount their value, okay? They might explain why so many people will actually choose the $100 today over twice the amount in the future. Their present bias overrides logic and they allow a big future with potential extraordinary results to get away, okay? Now, imagine the devastating impact living this way every day could have on your future self. Remember, our conversations on delayed gratifications turns out that what starts out as marshmallows can later cost you much more. OK, now this is where you have to decipher the decisions that you make every day can compound your outcome in the future. So you might have two marshmallows today, but if you're eating two marshmallows every day, what's going to happen in the future? <laughs> what is that going to look like? Okay. But if you're doing one thing per day, going towards your, the future that you want, the bigger picture, that is the compound effect that we want to look at. And you know what? I'm going to pull that book for us this, this year to go over. That's one of my favorite books. Okay. So let's not, let's not get caught up in the things that are right there at our reach. Let's make sure we're keeping focus on the big thing. It's just each day we're prioritizing the one thing to get to the big thing. Okay. All right. So on page 152, it says, connect today to all your tomorrows. It matters. Research backs this up. The three separate study psychologists observed 262 students to see the impact of visual visualization on outcomes. The students were asked to visualize in one or two ways. Those in one group were told to visualize the outcome, like getting an A on exam, and the others were asked to visualize the process needed to achieve a desired outcome, like all the study sessions needed to earn the A on the exam. In the end, students who visualized the process performed better across the board. They studied earlier and more frequently and earned higher grades than those who simply visualized the outcome. So you can't just meditate and visualize things. You have to be doing the work. <laughs> Point blank, period. You have to apply yourself. You can't just sit down and be like, yes, I see myself living in the million dollar home. I see myself driving this car. I see myself helping people in my community. I see myself writing a book. You, once you open your eyes, you should be setting something into action and into play to get there. Okay. So visualize the process. So that way you're falling in love with the process y'all and the results are going to come. <laughs> that's the thing okay on page 152 it also says people tend to be overly optimistic about what they can accomplish and therefore most don't think things all the way through researchers call this planning fallacy visualizing the process breaking a big goal down into steps needed to achieve it helps engage your strategic thinking you need to plan to achieve extraordinary results OK, so that's the kicker. <laughs> OK, I like on the page um, 155, it has your big ideas and it says knowing your future goal is how you begin. Identifying the steps you need to accomplish along the way keeps your thinking clear while you uncover the right priority you need to accomplish right now. Write your goals down, you guys, and keep them close. 
pull your purpose through to a single priority built by goal setting to the now and that priority. The one thing you can do such by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary. We'll show you the way to extraordinary results. And once you know what to do, the only thing left is to go from knowing to doing. I was in class, I was teaching a class today and the quote was like, Oh gosh, what was the quote? It was so good. But it was basically like, don't out knowledge yourself. Don't try to over acknowledge yourself and not get started. Like I'll catch people in real estate. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I got to research. I got to research. I got to look this up. I got to do this. And they keep coming up with ways to study and to learn instead of just doing. (laughs) Okay. I put it here in my notes. You cannot go without a destination. It's like getting into your car and just driving around aimlessly. (laughs) You wasting time. You wasting gas with no plan of action. Okay. Do any of you guys still get into your car? Even though you know the city, you know um, the area. Do you still use your GPS? Like I know how to get to places that I'm going It's still, though, I will put in my GPS or like ways just to see if there's another route that's easier to take. So I might have a destination and I might have a route that I normally take, but sometimes it could be congested. It could be backed up. There could be an accident. So I put in the destination just so I can see if there's an easier route. So some a lot of times in our planning We have a destination of where we want to go and we have to treat it as if we're getting on the road to take a trip. You know, we need to put in the address and then we need to see what directions and that'd be through researching, following people that you inspired to be like, finding out what they did, applying it to your life and getting to the destination. Okay. Because that is the best way to be effective and to be efficient. If you say you want to be a podcaster, but you're not listening to no podcast, you're not researching how to even start a podcast, but you're going around saying, yeah, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast. But you're not doing anything to even attempt to become a podcaster (laughs) or I get people, I want to be a realtor. I want to be a realtor. I want to be a realtor. But you're not doing anything to research. You're not, you're just sitting around talking and sharing some listings on your social media doesn't make you a realtor. Like what effective and efficient work are you putting in to accomplish your goals? All right. All right. So that was chapter 14, Live by Priority. And next week we'll be getting into chapter 15 and 16 chapter 15 is live for productivity yes and it's going to discuss time blocking which i'm really really good at and then chapter 16 the three commitments Ooh, i like it okay and then we'll be almost done with this book our next book is fire too okay so do understand we do have they do have this book on audible we do have a partnership with them as well get 30 days experience free premium audio audible experience you can listen to books there's wellness programs i'm on there for podcasts theatrical performances comedy i love listening to comedy i don't know if y'all remember back in the day when we used to have the ricky smiley cds um used to put them in be on the road trip or just in a car listening and cracking up laughing i love stuff like that okay uh, so let's get into the challenge of the week. Oh, the challenge of the week was inspired by two things that we went through in these chapters. On page 145, it discusses pick a direction. Okay. I want you guys to pick a direction, pick a destination. And then I want you to do what was inspired on page 152. I want you to visualize it and I want you to write it down. And I know we probably did this challenge before. But this time, I want you to make it like a roadmap. I want you to, this is going to be fun where you can use your creative juices. I want you to get maybe a poster board or just a regular sheet of paper. And I want you to write your destination on one side. And then I want you to write your start. And remember, start and finish is just to this particular destination. And then I want you to have one or two routes. I want you to have 
no, not one or two. I want you to have two or three routes to get to that same destination. OK, because I want you to be creative. I want you to think outside the box. I want you to think the what ifs that come to mind. Well, what if this happened? OK, how do we route that? Kind of like when you're driving your GPS and it tells you we found a better route. I want you to really deep dive into this destination. So when you do run into uh, an issue or something may come up or what if does come up that did happen, you have a plan in pay place that you've thought about to combat that. OK, so I want you to make a roadmap to your destination. That's your challenge this, um, this week is to roadmap your destination. OK. All right. So that way you you've picked a destination. You visualize the destination and you have wrote it down and you've also have preventatives in place. Ooh, that's a plan in itself. So do this activity and I want you to review it daily when you're accomplish your goal. And then when you're doing it, take like a red pen so that way you can see your progress. I think that would be a really good visual to see that you're actually making progress to your destination. Just like the GPS, you know how it's like uh, blue or purple. And as you go, it kind of fades to show that you're closer and closer to your destination. So that's what I want you to do this week. I want you to map it out, make a roadmap to your destination. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's get into what would the crew do? Yes. Yes. If you want advice, you can email the crew book club at gmail.com or you can simply DM me on the, on Instagram at the crew book club or drop it in the YouTube comments. And I would definitely respond right here on the podcast. Okay. This was a DM to me and it read, I have always been a woman who felt connected to God. Lately, I feel disconnected. I listen to the who gonna check me boo segment every week. And I hear how excited you are. Up. You are speaking about God. How do you stay so on fire for God? You seem to be, at so much peace. <laughs> the person who sent this personally knows me and they run into me uh, regularly. So I appreciate you <laughs> reaching out and asking the crew. And I'm, we having a relationship with Christ is something that I um that I worked worked and work for it's not I think of the effort that I put into everything else but I want to make sure that the effort I put into with Christ is just as important is more important than anything um every morning I have a conversation with him and I step outside of myself and I'm always asking him what does he want me to do and I think I stay on fire for him because he made the ultimate sacrifice for me. And I've seen my life, uh, I've seen my life without Christ. And I don't like it. And I never want to go back to that. So, yeah, you might get disappointed with how things may be going. But then I go back to scripture. I'm like, everything is working for my good. Yes, we make decisions that. That is not always because Christ, we make selfish decisions because he give us choice that takes us off. But I also learned through scripture, he's the orchestrator of time. So I think the way that I stay on fire for him is connected with him daily, whether he speaks to me in the moment or not. But I can tell you one thing. Uh, it's not that he's not ever not speaking. It's are you giving him time? Are you giving him the time to speak and turning you off to hear him come through? I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I remember having a conversation with a few uh, friends of mine. It was a group chat and I had a friend struggling with um, connecting with Christ and she hasn't been to church since the pandemic. And I'm like, yeah, because watching church online is totally different than experiencing it with people. Um, 
it's like being in that room and being so open and seeing other people worship and praise and then having it's just like a different type of environment um watching sermons is good that's just not the only way you should be receiving God that those are should be pluses um inspiration to scripture I know when I'm watching some sermons I'll jot down the scripture and I go back and I read it myself and I say you know God how can I apply this to my life what can I get out of this um and also watching sermons with intentions like there are some sermons where I'm like okay I can't listen to this on podcast mode I need to get my journal sit down and watch it and I'll find myself like praising and having church in my house so (laughs) I think giving God the opportunity to show up, even when you don't think he's showing up, but sitting in silence enough and he'll speak to you. He'll speak to you. Um, But yeah, I feel like I'm at peace because I don't, I have no choice but to be at peace. Why worry? Then that means I'm not activating my faith, but that, that takes work. That takes dedication and I'm not, you, you can't be going to God once a month thinking that you're going to have a relationship with him. (laughs) Think about your human experience. When you first meet someone that you're, that you like and they're doing things for you and you're involved with them and you're having a moment with them, you spend time with them. Um, But that's a constant thing. So you have to constantly be spending time with Christ, whether you want to or not. (laughs) Okay, so that's what I have for what would the crew do? Sorry, y'all. I'm like having a whole moment, but I love God so much. He's so good. All right. So before we end this episode, y'all, you know, I got to give you the quote of the week. How the quote of the week comes from page 135 out of our book. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. So crew, what are you going to do? You're going to keep finding your way through life or are you going to take control and create it? All right. The choice is yours. (laughs) I will see y'all right here on the Crew Book Club podcast. Bye. What I'm saying bye for it. That's supposed to be like, hey, y'all can tell I'm tired. (laughs) I'm going to take a nap. (laughs) Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.